Hey, welcome back to another installment of how much money did Michael lose this week in the stock market? Well, I'll tell you what, I didn't, I didn't lose much money. I don't think I lost any actually. Maybe on a few stocks here and there, but over the long term, the bigger picture, I'm actually up quite a bit in my portfolio. And you guys know we're on the road to $25,000 in my track your dividends portfolio by the end of the year. And we're going to take a look at that. We're going to see how we're going to see how well I'm doing in there. And we're also going to look at my newest position in my M1 finance portfolio after we look at my dividend portfolio on Robinhood. But before we do that, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm because it really helps the channel more than what you guys know. And if you haven't done so yet, help us reach our subs growth goal of 2,500 by the end of April. Uh, inner April's coming up pretty quick and we are like 300 subs away. So let's try to hit that. That'd be pretty cool if we could do that. Also, if you want two free stocks just for depositing your first hundred dollars in WeBull, hit the link in the top pinned comment. If you do so, you use my link, you'll get, you'll get two free stocks just for signing up and depositing your first $100 using WeBull. You guys know this is one of my favorite accounts when it comes to trading and riskier plays because it has so much more information on there. It's not like Robin Hood, it's not like, but anyway, enough of that. Go ahead and do that if you guys would like to uh, get the two free stocks. Well guys, let's go ahead and take a look at my track your dividends portfolio. This time we're gonna look at it on the phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my uh, glasses there so I can see a little better. Let's go ahead and uh, check this out. So my track your dividend portfolio right now, we're at $19,000. And seventy-two dollars up. We're up uh, four thousand six hundred ninety-three bucks. Dividend yield is two point seven nine. Uh, yield on costs three point seven, and uh, annual income five hundred and thirty-two bucks. We are inching closer to that five fifty, and it feels real good. And you guys know how this goes. It goes ticker symbol, shares price, average cost, uh, profit loss, dividend yield, yield on costs, annual income, safety. Mm. And you guys know one of the main reasons why I like this, not just because I can keep both my Robin Hood and you know, any other portfolio in here together to track all my dividends and all that, but they show you a dividend safety factor score, which I find is really, really neat, especially whenever you're trying to find new dividends to, um, new dividend stocks, should I say, to add to your portfolio. Let's see, Apple, 75, AGNC, five. Hmm, a couple of these don't have a uh, dividend yield. ARC actually has a dividend yield, but it doesn't show it on here because it doesn't show ETFs uh, safety factor scores. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at my Robinhood portfolio, which makes up the most of this here. We're gonna check out what my positions look like. Now you guys know I structured my Robinhood portfolio as somewhat of a monthly dividend payer because I do get paid every month by certain stocks and we'll see what that is in a second, guys. You know this is structured from highest equity to lowest. So first we have Tesla. I am up um, 500 bucks, which is 47%, okay? It's 11% of my portfolio. Realty income, 21 shares, I'm up 152 bucks, which is 11.82%. This is 10% of my portfolio. Next, we have MJ on the road to 100, but this one here, 54.2 shares, I'm up 143 bucks, which is 14%, and this is 8% of my portfolio. SPHD, 26 shares, $203 I'm up, and that is 21% gain right there, and this is 8% of my portfolio. Raytheon Technologies, RTX, 13.7 shares, I'm up $207, which is 23%, and this is 7.57% of my portfolio. AT&T, okay. 30 shares, I'm up, well, I'm down 41 bucks, which is down 4%. You guys know we were down quite a bit, over almost 200 bucks um, about a month ago, two months ago maybe. And this is the joy of uh, holding long-term. Do have a dividend coming up of 15 bucks, which I'm excited about. And this is 6% of my portfolio. JP Morgan Chase, 5.8 shares. Um, I'm up $156, which is a uh, 21% up, and this is 6% of my portfolio. Now, this is also have uh, April 30th, $5.24, a dividend coming in. Coca-Cola, owning 15 shares, I'm up 57 bucks, which is 7%, and this is 5% of my portfolio. PSEC, oh, prospect capital hit $8, let's see. So I own 112 shares and I'm up $284, which is a 46% gain. And this is 6% of my portfolio. And I have an upcoming dividend of $6.72. Apple, $134, that's nice. So I'm up um, $320 on Apple. 
My average cost is $84. I know, I like that. Uh, and this is 59%, I'm up. And this is 6.08% of my uh, portfolio. Next, we have Nexstar Media Group, NXT. NXST, should I say. Uh, four shares were up $249.10, and this is 61% of my portfolio. I'm sorry, 61% gain, and this is 4.6% uh, of my portfolio. Intel, INTC, I own eight shares, over eight shares. Uh, I'm up $122, and that's a 29% gain, and this is 3.8% of my portfolio. VTI, I own two shares. Um, I'm up $57, which is 15%, and this is 3% of my portfolio, and I'm investing $10 every week on top of whatever I decide to invest into this. Um, so I figure if I don't invest into this every week, I still would have something reoccurring into it, guys. It might seem trivial now, but as long as I'm continuously investing, I will be happy. And I do want to add, uh, make this a much larger position in my portfolio, and we're gonna do so over time. Next, we have AGNC on 22 shares, and uh, I'm up $51, and that is a 15% gain. This is 2.73% of my portfolio. And uh, next, we have Stag Industrial, nine shares. I'm up $69, and this is a 24% gain, 2.48% of my portfolio. Verizon, on 4.6 shares, and I'm down $3, which is 1.11%, and this is 1.9% of my portfolio, and I have a $2.91 um, dividend coming next month. First Horizon National, 14 shares, I'm up uh, 1,000%, 1,400%, should I say, and uh, that's a $237 gain. That's 1.79% of my account. Pfizer, finally seeing some movement on Pfizer. For only six shares of Pfizer, I'm up $18.72, which is roughly 8% of my, my uh, gains here. And this is 1.71% of my portfolio. Starbucks, I only own a little over a share. The only reason I own more than one share itself is because reinvesting the dividends drip, right? Uh, my total return is $38.89, and that's 47% return. I should have added much more money into this, but hey, hindsight, right? And this is less than 1% of my portfolio. J&J, also uh, one share, uh, $150 average cost. I'm up $12, this is 8%, and this is 1.16% of my portfolio. So looking at my ETF stock ratio, I'm back to 81% stocks and 19% ETFs. You guys know we're trying to get it to where it's closer to 30% ETFs and maybe even further, maybe even 35% ETFs. But we shall see how this is gonna play out over time. All right, taking a look at my M1 Finance portfolio, we are up 151% on all time, and that's a $2,000 gain. All right, my total is $5,160.06. But let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what we have going on. So Tesla, I'm up 1,000%. Uh, which is a $777 gain. ARK investing, I'm down 6%. Now this is of course all time. I'm down 6%, which is down 25 bucks, but it's, it's okay. I do have faith in the ARK investing, uh, A-R-K-K, -K, should I say. Wind Resorts, I'm up 77%, which is 130 bucks. Upwork, I'm up 232%, which is $260.58. Google, I'm up 96%, which is $173.60. Microsoft, I'm up 68.92%, which is $104.18. Amazon, I'm up 74%, which is $97.08. Apple, I'm floating around 99% gain right here. Hopefully I hit 100 soon, which is $119.79. Exxon Mobil, 78%, which is $105. Dropbox, 19%, which is a newer position, not the newest, but a newer one, uh, 43 bucks and 57 cents. IBM, 30%, which is 42 bucks. O Realty Income, I'm up 24%, which is $33. Activision Blizzard, 66%, which is 
Neo, another newer position. Uh, I'm down 40%, which I'm kind of sad about, but it's okay. I got in at the wrong time, obviously. This is why you guys shouldn't have FOMO, fear of missing out, don't buy in at the wrong time, wait for a dip. This is living proof, wait for the dip, unless you're dollar cost averaging in, but I would still wait for the dip. If you don't wait for the dip, at least buy like one share and watch it go down. That way you can keep an eye on it and it'll force you to buy the dip. Um, and the newest position here, Facebook. So I own half a share in Facebook and I'm up um, all time 0.23%, which is 38 cents, which isn't much. Okay. My average share price is $305.52. My average cost is $173. That's all I have vested into this as of right now. Well, guys, that's how I made my $19,000 investment so far. How quick are we going to see that 25K? I think we're going to hit it pretty fast. How are you guys doing on your portfolio? Hey, also, we just seen a huge Dogecoin uh, run up. Did you guys invest in Dogecoin or any type of crypto? I know my crypto account is popping right now, and I'm really, really happy about it. And I might start investing a lot more money in crypto, but we shall see how everything goes. Listen, if you enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm because it really helps the channel more than you, what you guys know. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're still watching, hit that red subscribe button, turn to gray to join this family we have going on, guys. Listen, if you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me, go ahead and click one of these videos on the screen. I'm going to get out of here, guys. Peace, love, and prosperity.